So the Office Pico Tank build has gotten a little awkward. I'm gonna tell you what's next for the Pico Tank in this video. What is up, coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. The best way to support this channel is to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. Here's the confession. I gotta tell you what happened with the Pico Tank. My day job is an on-air radio personality at a local station here in St. Louis, Missouri, and the office environment is pretty loose. One of our engineers actually has a five-gallon goldfish tank in his office, so I was like, what if I put a Pico Reef tank in my office? I was really excited to fill it with flower nems or like colorful zoas and really impress my coworkers with the color that the reef can provide. So I got all of the stuff and you can see that build above from start to finish. And then it just kind of sat there. I got a light and it continued to sit. I know what it was. I had to get the ATO before I wanted to progress with it, right? Well, I got the ATO and then it just sat more. I never once actually put a living thing inside of the tank. I take that back. I did put some Fritz Turbo Start in there, so there technically was living things in there. So I got a lot of cyano and algae. So what exactly happened? So I'm only in that office for about three to four hours a day. And then we're in the studio doing the show for the rest of the day. One of the main issues was I didn't have all of my creature comforts. I didn't have my equipment, my testing equipment, my salinity checkers, RO on hand. Didn't have all that, like I've got down here in the basement. Things you don't think about when you set up an office reef tank are Vacations. I went on a two week Christmas vacation, literally gone from the studio for two weeks. And mind you, there's not a whole lot of people in the office at that time either. And I'm not gonna ask somebody else to come and feed my tank while I'm gone. And then you have the weekends. Well, there's two days of you not being there that anything could happen. We've all been through it where we leave for even a couple hours and then all of a sudden, things are going awry in our tanks. Space was another big issue. I was going to get like a, a shelving storage unit so I could put all my gear in there, but you know, it, it really limited the amount of space that I had between my desk and the wall or that window. And the funniest thing was, is nobody was interested in this thing at all because I was sitting in front of it. Whenever I was in my office, you couldn't see anything because I was literally sitting in front of the tank. So you'd have to come into the office and actually look behind me to see the tank and nothing was in it. So maybe that's why people weren't interested. But at the same time, nobody was like, hey, what's that going on there? Not that I need extra attention for this thing to succeed. It was just like, why am I doing this? And most importantly, it added stress to my day. I was worried about algae. I was worried about what happens after I put livestock in it. I was worried about going away for the weekend or vacation. There was just nonstop worry. And that's so silly. The tank is two and a half gallons. This hobby should be fun. And it just wasn't very fulfilling to me anymore. And that is totally okay. I think as reefers, we're always thinking about the next project, the next cool thing that we can do. And sometimes it just doesn't work out and that's okay. I'm sure many of you make office tanks work and that's huge, kudos to you. If you work at Bulk Reef Supply, I am very jealous of you because it seems like everybody there has a tank. And if you're gone for a couple weeks, well, someone can just come and feed your tank because they all know what they're doing. That's not the case when it comes to radio. So I made the difficult decision to take it down. I wish that all tank breakdowns took <laughs> less than five minutes, but we're gonna go ahead and take this home, empty this water, and uh, we're all set to hit the road. So I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen with this tank next, and I'm pretty excited about it actually. So what's next for this little Pico tank? Well, big things actually. I know that I can give this tank the love that it needs here in the llama's layer. That's what we're just gonna dub this as for now. It sounds very Dr. Evil-ish and kind of creepy, let's be honest, but I'm kind of creepy. If you run a Pico tank with an auto water change system that feeds into an existing system, please in the comment section below, let me know what kind of equipment you use and what you would suggest I do, because that's what I'm thinking about doing so that it's constantly got new water and it's 
Honestly, it's just an appendage of one of these existing systems. I know, it's cheating, but like I said earlier, I want this to be an enjoyable experience. I don't want this to be an added stress. Now, while I'm going through this decision-making process, should I take it down, should I leave it up? Chelsea from the Instagram channel Aquatic Aptitude reached out to me. She does custom aquascapes and loves doing Pico aquascapes and said she would make one for the Pico tank. And I thought to myself, well, if I add new rock, it's gonna have to cycle again. It's just gonna, you know what? That's exactly what I needed to start this thing back over. Let's take it down in the office and put it up in the llama's lair. Still sounds creepy. So here it is, here's the box. And this came probably a week and a half ago. So let's go ahead and open this. First of all, I wanna say that this might be the most colorful package I've ever received in my life, seriously. And the fact that the tissue paper, I mean, this is like just tissue paper is still intact is pretty crazy. So let's go ahead and open this and see what's inside because I have no idea. I wanted to make sure that we all got to see this for the first time together. I have to, right? To Bahama Lama Coral. Hope you enjoy your new pile of rocks. Thanks for your great content. Keep it up. P.S. Make sure to use a bacteria startup since this is dry rock. Also recommend a quick soak in RO to dislodge any dust from travel at aquatic aptitude. Thank you so much, Chelsea. It appears like it, it did break. It definitely broke in transit. All right, I don't think this is what she had in mind, but uh, we'll fuss with it a little bit once we get it going here. So you kind of look at it this way. This is gonna be really cool, I think. So it spreads the entire length. I sent her the dimensions of this tank and she created this. I'm gonna have to get the super glue out and uh, and go ahead and re-glue this piece together. This is a great scape. So we'll go ahead and add sand to the bottom, re-glue this together, and then we'll go ahead and put this back for the final scape. I'm pretty excited about this one. All right, so we got our little filter. The heater. Here's the awesome adapter that Telegram made me to kind of fill this gap right here. And that's pretty much it. So if I add an ATO, I'll put it right here. I've got the ATO to put on it. But uh, if I end up going with the auto water change system, I guess that probably makes sense for me to uh, use the lagoon in that case. The lagoon is right here. I'm still gonna keep the AI. It might be cool to hang it from up here. That might be cool. Okay, I'm definitely excited now that it's back up. I uh, think that's where it's gonna be, and I might just designate that whole spot around there to be the Pico Tank setup. It is an absolute disaster down here now. There is stuff everywhere because I had a lot of my testing kits and everything back in that corner. So I've lost all of that real estate for the most part at this point. I could add some shelving around here to store some things. That's for another video. Now I didn't fill it because I wanna consult with Chelsea and make sure that that aquascape kind of reflects what she was going for. I did consult with Chelsea and that aquascape that I put together is not what she was going for. What she had in mind was much better. This is what she had in mind the entire time. And here's the photo of what it looked like when she was done with it. And I did my best to re-glue it in the way that she had it. And it looks pretty spot on. Thankfully where it broke, all those seams were pretty clean. So I was just able to super glue everything back together. And if you haven't done it yet, go check out her stuff at Aquatic Aptitude. Her name is Chelsea super talented this is awesome stuff go ahead and check her instagram out i'll link it below as well so this will give you an idea of what it will look like in the tank it's not in it yet because i want to make sure that all that glue hardens before i move it but uh check out the little llama 
you know, it happens. When I mean, you ship things, things break. Uh, FedEx, UPS, the USPS, they don't really care if your item gets there in one piece or not. Not a big deal at all. It gives us something to look forward to in the next video when we get the tank wet and hopefully start the cycle. I don't want to take this fast by any means. I still want to do this as slow as I normally would set up a new tank. Now that I've got all my testing supplies here and fresh RO whenever I need it, I can make sure that this tank is going to start off the right way. If you want to see how this tank progresses, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you get notified whenever I upload new stuff on this tank or any videos that I post. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, a there's a frag tank here. I'm not sure if you noticed that at all. And it's it's not for a new shipment of corals from osachoice.com. I'm not starting up my own frag farm like OSA just did, but if you haven't gone to osachoice.com, you should do that because there's tons of corals there to choose from, and you should also check out their YouTube channel as well. That is not what this is for either. I cannot wait to show you what this is. This is something that I've been wanting to do for years. Ever since I got into the hobby, I've been wanting to do what this tank is going to be set up for. I know, it's super vague, and you're like, oh, YouTuber tease, oh, oh, cool, can't wait, but really, it's going to be fun. Uh, for now, I need to test out this new fragging tool. Have you seen this? Let me, let, me get, let me get it real quick. Have you seen this? Have you seen this new fragging tool? Ugh. This is a miniature lightsaber, and... It's great for Aptasia. That's a little bit too much production value for <laughs> a reefing channel, but uh, you know me, always extra. <laughs> watch these, watch these videos.